We're video games. When I first started doing weird video games, Super Mario Bros. was by far the most requested game for me to review, which had me kind of nonplussed. I was looking to review games where ninjas turn into sheep that shoot tiny sheep at living totem poles, and Buddhist monks fight Captain America with abstract symbols, and people wanted me to review the most influential game of all time. The game that every game everywhere copied for years. Can you call something weird if everything else is just like it? People would say, Super Mario is weird when you think about it, and yes, sure, but there are a lot of games that are so obviously weird that you don't have to think about, so why bother with Mario? But over time, I've come to realize that what Super Mario Bros. did was take something really weird and make it so totally mainstream to the point that nobody even notices how weird it really is. Nintendo has normalized weird. Like, in the same way that your kids might come home one day and say, Hey, it turns out none of my other friends have parents who sacrificed bags of Cheetos to Gabe Newell. Is that not something everyone does? And then you have the talk. So now, as an honorable mention, here's everything weird about Super Mario Bros. <sighs> Eating a mushroom makes you giant. You jump on and squash evil mushrooms. You run and jump around on giant mushrooms. Everything is a mushroom. The good guys, the bad guys, the weapons, the landscape, even the princess is a mushroom. Everything has eyes. There are turtles that duck inside frictionless shells that can send everything in their path flying like a weaponized and afraid living bowling ball. Oh, and you know what else has a frictionless shell? Fireproof beetles. I never tried to kick a beetle, but I don't imagine they would slide into and knock out other beetles. And I know for a fact that they die when you set them on fire. Uh, I, I went on the wrong part of YouTube once. We have turtles with wings. Turtles with spikes that hatch from spiky eggs that are thrown at you by presumably its mother laying and throwing its own children while riding a cloud. There are turtles that throw hammers. The boss is a giant spiky turtle dragon thing that breathes fire and sometimes throws hammers. Oh, but most of the time it's not really him, and hitting him with fire that grows out of a flower reveals he was a squid in disguise the whole time. I'm not even gonna mention the drain pipes that bend space and time. Oh, I guess I just did. There are drain pipes that bend space and time. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna climb a beanstalk that grew out of a brick that I punched all the way up to the clouds to collect all the coins that somebody apparently left up there, despite the fact that the place appears to be completely unexplored. I mean, I don't see any other beanstalks around here. None of the turtles can fly that high. The only thing that can go this high is the fish. Did the fish leave these coins? I don't even know what to say about the fact that of all the creatures, including the ones that ride clouds and have actual wings, the fish are the ones that have the highest vertical reach. Do you see how much of a leap this is from the comparatively normal Mario Bros. arcade game? Mario was originally not meant to have a set profession, and went from carpenter to plumber, and went on to other jobs like demolitionist, soldier, and... pharmacist. In Mario Brothers, being a plumber made sense. He and Luigi crawled through pipes, getting rid of all the crazy that kept getting clogged in there. Turtles, crabs, flies... Hey, all kinds of stuff gets washed up in the sewers. Including loose change, so coins as a reward made sense. Only thing that was weird was that fireballs materialized out of nowhere. Now, I've never been in a sewer, so maybe it's common for the air to spontaneously combust and incinerate stuff? If you're a sewer maintenance worker or a ninja turtle, feel free to correct me in the comments. But anyway, when they made Super Mario Bros., they kept the premise that he was a plumber, kept the turtles, the coins, the pipes, and even the fireballs, even though thematically it became less about plumbing and more about consuming illicit substances. In this game, Mario should have been a herbalist. Or, I don't know, a gardener? What profession best describes using mushrooms and flowers to fight clouds? Mario can also breathe underwater, or hold his breath indefinitely. I mean, since it was an older, simpler game, you can just assume that adding a breathing mechanic would make it too complicated. Sure, but I would like to point out that there were a few games with underwater swimming in them, like Jungle Hunt, and 
Oh hey, look at that! Jungle Hunt has a breathing mechanic. Okay, I know they just didn't want to overcomplicate the game. It's just funnier to imagine they intended for Mario to be some super plumber who doesn't have to breathe. In any case, although he can survive indefinitely underwater, if he ever falls into the water on a surface level, he dies instantly. Oh yeah, and fires burn underwater with no opposition. Some of you will wonder why I'm not talking about how he smacks free-floating bricks with his head in order to collect useful items. Well, aside from the fact that it's been established he's actually not intended to be using his head, but his fist, what's really funny is that these blocks that just hang in the air very likely were just an abstraction based on the fact that the game is shown from a side view, and it could conceivably be attached to just about anything, like every legend, every other platformer. But when the game branched out into a whole series and was adapted into comics and cartoons, they just went with the notion that gravity-defying blocks just float there in the air for no reason, and now it's canon. And that, friends, is the most iconic video game franchise in the world. Oh yeah, and apparently all these blocks and clouds and everything have eyes because they were mushroom people that Bowser turned into bricks, and if you punch them, you free them, and they reward you with cool stuff. So I have no idea why freeing this one guy from a brick causes him to instantly grow you a beanstalk. And if someone was a big floating block and you freed them, why are they now a different type of block? Is that better? And I have no idea what happens when you smash a brick to pieces. Do they die? The manual says that Princess Toadstool is the only one who can reverse the spell and turn everyone back into normal. So do all these bricks you smash turn back into piles of body parts? Or do they just revert back to normal living people? I don't know. Especially because in all the later games there's still floating blocks everywhere, so I guess the princess did do squat after you rescued her. Thanks, princess.